What's going on everybody and welcome to part 5 of our shenanigans with Neural Networks tutorial series. In this part what we're going to talk about is the results from uh, training the, gener the let's, I'll call it a classification generator. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about it. So as you can see what I'm running right here is actually um, the Let's see, can you, I guess you can't see this on the screen. Let me pull this up a little bit if I can. Come on. There we go. So basically what it's doing is every time it gets the classification right, like that was a 1, it predicted it was a 1. This was a 7, I'm guessing. This is a 2, it says 0, and so on. So these are all incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. And then eventually it might get a correct one. Like here, 0, correct. So not a 7. Anyways, um, I've been running this for a while, about 316 tests, 317 now, and it's about 22% accurate. Also, I'm still training this model. This is actually still a very young model. So moving over here, this is the model still in training. As you can see, it has leveled out quite a bit, um, but if I do smooth this out, you should see that it's still slowly tapering down still. So I'd like to actually let it keep going. In fact, it's, still, it's like less than 10% done with at least the 50 epochs that we wanted to go through. So I kind of wanted to let it continue going, but I didn't want to do that if it was just a waste of time. So I actually did not know if this was going to be successful. My first attempt was unsuccessful completely, and then I wondered if we gave it a little more of an opportunity to get things right, if that would help. Um, and sure enough, it has. So what I'd like to do now is go over... Um, at least the code that I used to get this. I, I don't think it's wise. There's really no point for us to write it. So I just kind of want to show you the logic that I'm doing to detect whether or not we got something right. And also we should probably talk about um, what the chances of getting it right are. So for example, with a regular classifier, you would say the classifier is better than random if it makes a makes the prediction right. In the case of MNIST, there's 10 predictions. So anything over 10% is um, you're better than random. Now with a generative model though, I mean, it could it's like an infinite number of things it could generate. So we'd still like to see something over 10% accuracy, but um, really any accuracy is, is pretty good because it could have generated anything. Um, as we can see, it get, seems to get zeros pretty well, probably because it just over predicts for a zero very frequently. Um, but it, as you saw there, it got the three right and so on and the nine. Anyways, uh, it's, on a, it's on a roll. That did look like a four. Come on, man. Anyway, uh, here is the code that I just kind of changed up. That's what's, This is what's running right at this moment. Let me just fit it to the screen so I don't talk about something that you can't actually see. And um, not too much here that is different. As you can see, it's the same kind of logic that we've seen before. And again, if you want this code, you can go to the text-based version of the tutorial. Uh, and it, and it's, oh, I'll put it in there. Um, it's actually not there right now because I've made some changes. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, there we have that. And basically, all it's doing is just gonna in, it's just gonna iterate through the x's, which in this case, uh, let me make sure. I'm the right yeah, right. They're the validation. So these are numbers it's never seen before. Um, so it's gonna iterate through those, and then it's going to make a classification and output it. Now, our logic for doing this isn't necessarily the greatest logic. I'm still very much in the development stage, but for example. Um, what, what constitutes in our logic is whether whether we got it right or not is, um, wait, I'm sorry, this is not updated. Hold on, <laughs> let me pull up the updated one. <laughs> I've like commented out this logic, but not shown the other logic. One moment. Okay, take two. Yeah, here's the new logic. So, uh, so yeah, if argmax of the label is just in sample.decode you know, for the last 90 elements, we just say, yeah, we did a good job. Um, but obviously there's a few reasons why, um, oh, why did it do that? I'm not sure, we must've hit quit or something. Anyway, we ran 402 tests, that's enough tests I'd say. Uh, anyway, and that was on a model with 18,000 um, steps and now we're already at 21,000 actually so I'll probably transfer over again in a little bit um, anyway what I just wanted to do is just see like 
is it worth me continuing to train this model for a couple of days or, or not? And I think it is. So I'm going to actually let this one continue. I think we'll continue with the next topic on the tutorial and we'll probably come back to this one for the results. Um, so you'll have to stay tuned. It's going to be a cliffhanger. But right now, getting about 23% accuracy is, is pretty good. But anyways, as I was saying, um, so like in the case of like a zero, for example, there's frequently zeros. Um, so a lot of times too, it just starts predicting another number. Like this is a perfect example where, I mean, it got the colons and it started to sort of make that prediction, but then it just starts drawing another zero basically, or just who knows what it's doing, but that's not totally right. And right. And, and we're classifying that as being correct. So take that with a grain of salt or, or accuracy. Um, but just from running it and visually inspecting it as well, I, I think we're doing pretty good. I'll worry about making something a little more official. We'll probably use something like a regular expression or something to find something that fits the correct format and then decide, is this correct? Is it not? Do we have a large group of, like in this case, is it like a bunch of sevens, not just one seven? Or in this case, like it says five. Well, if the prediction was a five and all we had was just this, I would say, no, that's wrong. Um, so anyways, I'll do that, but like I said, this was just uh, just a really quick test. Just sees anything here at all, um, and I think there is something here, so that's interesting. So I'll, I'm going to let this one continue uh, to run. The other thing I'll just show you, too, is if we do just run a python sample.py um, n equals... Let's do 5,000, and then let's just send it to out.text. If we do this, um, it's actually really good at, oh, the uh, primer. So hold on, let's, uh, so the primer is a space, and obviously we don't have any spaces. So let's do, uh, I think it's just, is it dash dash? Uh, or is it, I can't remember if it's prime or primer. Let's check, uh, yeah, dash dash prime. Yeah, dash dash for the full words. So anyway, prime equals, um, I don't know. We could just do like a bracket, anything really. And while that's going, let me pull up, uh, let's see, is this the one? Yes. I already have an out.text. Hopefully it'll get replaced. It's not the right timestamp. Okay, it says it's done. Um, looks good. Let's open that up. Hmm. Okay, I guess it's just appended to it. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, as we can see, though, um, this is, like, it should get these really well. So the ones that it generates, we should expect it. That's a goofy-looking five. Like, come on. Um, oh, man, it's getting these wrong. Okay, let me do a bigger one. <laughs> You're making me look bad. At least from what I've seen, um, generally it does a really good job of... Um, <clears throat> like, because in the one case we're doing, a gener we're doing classification, and then the other one it's doing generation, which is like stuff it's seen before. Uh, so it should be a, a, it's a slightly easier task to get the numbers right that it has generated. It's a much harder task to get the numbers right that um, it's not generating. So I think I might, I don't know, this should go pretty quick, but I might have to pause this one while we, while we wait. We can also just check out this. It looks like it's starting to tick up here, but on a long enough timeline, it'll, it should just continue to, to at least level out. I don't think we're going to make any more big changes, but um, I wouldn't mind letting it iterate a few more times through its own data set, though. Still going. Maybe I'll pause it. I'm just going to pause this until it's done. <laughs> so it, it core dumped? I, I can't decide. Is that my fault? Is that like me hitting a key that does that? <laughs> or, or does that just do that? Uh, let's see. Do we have an out text? We at least have... Ah, uh, it's empty. Damn it. Okay, let's do... Let's just do 25,000. Not 525,000. <laughs> okay, pausing. Okay, it's definitely me hitting control uh, four that is my pause button that is causing a core dump. Interesting. I, I noted. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm going to pause now and then I'm going to run this. 
All right, so now it is done. Let's see how we've done ourselves. Let's see, out.txt, should be this one. So hopefully this will look a little better than the other one. So three, correct, not a five, one, should be a six, one, should be a nine, seven, four, four, good, good, good. I'm not actually sure if that's a seven or a one. I'm gonna give it to him though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so interestingly enough, this one actually is doing worse uh, at generating the the classification part during just a straight up big um, big sample than when it was just a one hot array. It did much better uh, the other one, but I'm not really interested in 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 doing that. I'm not interested in the classifications being right in the generation where it just generates a bunch. Um, I'm more interested in, in how accurate it can be on things it's never seen and stuff. Anyways, um, but not bad. It's it's definitely better than it is on numbers it's never seen, but um, uh, before it was like perfect. Anyways, um, yeah, so that's just, that's just generation. That's a little easier than generating classifications on the validation set, just to be clear. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this model training for the couple of days that it needs to train for in order to uh, be fully done with 50 epochs. I'll probably check in again, um, maybe about at epoch 10 or something like that, or maybe tomorrow. Um, I'll see where we're at. It should probably be like epoch like 20 something or more. Um, so maybe we'll check in again. Otherwise, I'm going to start us working on the next thing, which is rather than generating the classification, generating the number based on the input that we want to put in instead. So it's very much like what we've actually just been doing up to this point, just with a couple of little tweaks, um, at least the way that I did it. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing in the coming videos. As always, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. You can support this content at pythonprogram.net slash support. Till next time.